Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We are in my cottage living room, as you can tell, with Finn Finn on his little cushion cloud in the background. Today is a really exciting one. Today we are going to do a home studio session and I'm gonna talk you through how to do it. I'm in a jumper today and it is very, very warm. So I'm guessing by about halfway through this video, I'm gonna turn into a sweaty mess. But there is a reason for that because in lockdown, as I've mentioned previous times, I have been really busy and my job is sitting at a desk. And so I now look like a burrito. And that's how I've been spending my time. Although I wish I could have been going around in a duvet as a living burrito, that would have been far more fun. Today we are going to be in this room and in this room we are going to shoot a home studio session in a very very small space. The floor area that we've got to use is around two meters squared which is tiny. I think it's actually maybe two meters and twenty centimeters but that's not the point. The point is it's a teeny tiny tiny weeny space and we're just going to have to make it work. So this is a kind of average size living room for most English houses and our house is a midnight 19th century cottage so this house was built in around 1850 it is a small old house and hopefully we're gonna take some nice pictures in it <sighs> getting warm already guys it's getting warm already <laughs> like I always mention please do remember to press the subscribe button and click the bell icon the bell icon helps you out because it gives you notification every single time I upload a video I upload a video every week and sometimes more than that if I feel like it. There is a very exciting announcement as well coming in this video so please do stay tuned for the end where I am going to let you in on a little surprise and if you like this channel or follow this channel or have watched at least one of my videos previously you might want to stick around until the end. You alright Finn? Good boy. For today, we are gonna be using a certain set of equipment. That equipment I have used in a previous video, which I will link above because it was also mentioned in there in detail. I'm not gonna go through it in that much detail today because the focus of today is doing studio in a teeny tiny space. It's also relevant for anybody who shoots um, either at home or they take their kit into clients' homes which is something that, that, that I used to do. And um, technically it could also be relevant if you have a shooting space that is not in your home. So maybe you hire a space, but you can't rig it up as an actual studio because there are things that would be very different. We've only got two lights to use today, but you could definitely do it with one. I will show you how to do that. I, I'm gonna be using strobes, my strobes, which I love, which are my Ilux Summit 600 threes, I think, which I will link in the description below. Um, I will be using those. I'm gonna be shooting today on probably my Nikon D800. I'm gonna be shooting. There's gonna be some unflattering angles because that's just the way it goes. I'm gonna try and include everything in here. I'm gonna try and position the camera in a position where you can see what's going on. It might not be perfect, but we're just gonna be doing the best that we can. I just want it to include everything that is important. So the order of the video today, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go and set up. So I will set up first. Then what I will do is I will um, just run through some very important settings situations. And then the third thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a dog and the dog that I will probably use for this video is Alfie because he's just so reliable. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cover off different types of shot in terms of my style. So that's really important guys. I don't shoot fine art, I don't shoot for print comp, I don't shoot that kind of style that's not me it just doesn't mesh with me I have done it before yeah just not my bag so we're going to be shooting commercial style portraits today we're going to use a bright seamless background probably yellow because it's me if you have any questions about anything that we are going to cover in this video please drop them down below I will include the timestamps for everything that I've just included there and the exciting announcement at the end on the screen right now so you can find what you want to know if you don't know what you want to know just start from the beginning and watch it through get a cup of coffee get a tea whatever you want to drink snacks if you want snacks get a pen and paper and note some stuff down you try not to forget anything I've not got any notes we're gonna do on the fly because it's me. Let's get set up. Little slippers. Just really quickly, so we've got two heavy duty light stands, which are the big boys to the right, 
Then we've got two normal light stands, not expensive, super cheap off of eBay. Then we've got two Ilex Summit strobes. And then we've got some clamps, super cheap from your local DIY or hardware store. Then we have the uh, two Octoboxes, which are here. And then we have a backdrop roll and a backdrop support. And over there, we've got a Fin Fin. <laughs> So that is the kit that we're going to be using today. And obviously uh, we also have a tri-grip reflector and a white balance card. Oh my God, I'm so warm. So the main thing to note really guys is that you just want to make sure that you've got things set up in a way that you know you can use. This is a super narrow backdrop paper. And what that means is we're going to kind of struggle in a way. We're going to have to do some editing to expand the backdrop. We'll mention this in the future, but just for reference, I will suggest that you guys go and watch a, another video on the channel and I will link that above now. And what that video is gonna talk you through is how to expand a backdrop in Photoshop. That is gonna be kind of essential if you're shooting in a small space. This might be the last of the roll. Okie koki. So personally, I like the roll to unroll that way, not that way, if that makes sense. So this would go this way round. Okay, and then you wanna just go ahead and like lift it up. Yeah, I like to go reasonably high, so like five foot-ish. Okay, right, so that is set up. I'm quite happy with the general height of it at the moment. You guys can probably all see my hoover, can't you? So with your legs of your backdrop stand, you just wanna be aware of the fact that you want that to be behind where the backdrop's gonna drop. And then before we go ahead and drop that down, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our strobe lights. So you could use nice, cheap, lightweight stands, but my strobes are quite heavy and just for safety reasons, I just like to use these uh, heavy duty air cushion stands which don't move. A link to those is in, in the description. I would suggest getting hold of some of these stands, whether you use them as backdrop supports or as light stands, that's up to you, but they are very, very good stands, these ones. So these Ilux lights are really good. They are wireless, which is a win for me. Again, just like from a safety standpoint, you don't wanna have cables on the floor. So that's why I would suggest if you can't afford to invest in strobes right now, invest instead in speed lights and some speed light modifiers. By modifier, I mean like soft box. So these Octoboxes are really good. I like them because they're really quick to put up, which is ideal if you are constantly having to drop them down. Like, you know, if you're setting up a studio in a house. Take off our base diffuser and go ahead and put that on there. Oh, I'm getting so warm, guys. It's like serious warmth. Okie koki, one's done. So as you can see, this is quite a large Octobox and um, I just prefer them bigger. I like to be able to move them super close so that there's really good light. And I just, for my style, it just works best to have a nice big light source. I'm gonna move you guys again. We have our strobe here to the right. We have one here to the left. We have our backdrop ready to be unrolled over there at the back. And essentially what we're doing is we've positioned our light so that they're kind of pointing almost straight across at each other, but with a slight tilt. And that's really important because we'll get back to that in a sec. So I'm just gonna let down the backdrop roll. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to shoot. And so I've just got my clamps ready. I will intersperse a clip, if I can, from the previous studio video that we did, just showing you how to clip these on so that nothing moves. Through the backdrop paper roll itself, and then over the backdrop paper roll, and over the crossbar of the backdrop, and then what that does is that gives you a completely solid uh, roll. If you are shooting client's dogs, 
weight your stands. So put sandbags through like the rungs of the stand and make sure that they are also weighted. That's really important. And also your lights as well, if you can. I know that you're kind of blocked a little bit by this light here but I need my light there. So um, I'm just gonna weight my front. If you're on a laminate floor or a hard floor, tape your front, but um, I'm on carpet, so I just use ca candle holders. So what I'm doing now is I'm just pulling out the backdrop so that there's not a solid crease on the floor. It's a much smoother curve. So I kind of want to do it this level so that you can kind of see what I can see. So I know that I've got this light here set up on my uh, trigger. That light is light B and this light over here is light A. So I've got my light to the right as 132 and then I've got my light to the left hand side as uh, one over eight. And then what I'm gonna do is not put the trigger on the camera. So we've done this before, we did this in our previous studio video. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna set up with the natural light. And the importance of this is we want a completely black image. Base settings are, you wanna be going for, start at f8, you want to be no higher than your uh, flash sync speed, which is usually 160th of a second, but it can be higher than that. Not much higher than 200th of a second though. You wanna start at ISO 100, you want to be in single shot mode so that you're not firing off more than one shot when you press the trigger. And when you are there, you just want to take a picture. It doesn't matter what it's of. And what you want to achieve is a picture like that. So there's nothing there. And that's the point, there's nothing there. Then you want to add your trigger to your camera and you wanna make sure that you know what you're photographing. So in this kind of a situation, I'll just chuck something out and I'll just put a, take a picture of that to see what the artificial light's doing. So then the next thing that we want to do is open up our white balance card, like so, and pop that into the scene. And then we want to photograph our white balance card. And you'll be able to get a pretty good judge of the exposure when you've got that, so you kind of want to match it. I guess slightly higher because I'm going to photograph a black dog, but you guys, you know, just work with what you've got. You want to be setting your exposure as best you can without introducing the dog. Remember, we've covered this before in the 10 tips for dog photography. Obviously in studio, it's slightly different. We're going to go and get a tennis ball and a dog. Oh. So as you can see, he kind of knows his job, but he gives you a good idea of the scale of what we're working with. So the backdrop is very, very narrow and he pretty much fills it. I'm gonna just remove his eye bogies. So I've got my model lights on, so I can see the light hitting him at this side of his face. I can also see the light hitting him from this side of his face. Good boy puppy. So what I can do is get a pretty good idea of where he needs to be sat. Now for my kind of a style, I like the dog to be a little bit closer towards me, so I'm gonna go right back into the fireplace and just shoot a headshot. So I'm holding my tennis ball in my left hand nice. Good. Okay. So you always give the dog the reward. Never withhold rewards. What's ball? Good. What's the ball? So I'm going to move the lights uh, further around and I'll show you the difference. Good. It's flatter light. So personally, I prefer the light that we get from the first one, which is a bit more directional, a bit harsher than I do from lights being straight on. So that's up to you guys as to whether you want to do that or not. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just moving my lights back. So I'm going to turn this one off. So I've got a tri-grip reflector here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up and clamp it to this light stand. So this light's not on, the light is not on. We've pointed it elsewhere, it is turned off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bounce light back. So we're angling the light to the left at the reflector and then he will be sat in the middle. And we'll see what we get with this. So it's not bright enough. So what you can do is you can move him further away from the light source and closer to the reflector or you can move the reflector closer to him. Ready? Remember, always reward the dog. 
I'm gonna take this reflector down, put my light back where it was. I'm gonna put you guys back where you were. Do you want one more? Do you want one more, first ball? I'm gonna get Pippi and then we will wrap this up. Careful, Pippi. So Pippi's a bit of a bull in a china shop. <laughs> She's small and ginger and a bit mad. Pippi used to be really scared of the backdrop paper noise, so she's come a really long way. And it's just slow desensitization to the noise. Good, wait in. Ready? So for Pippi, the exposure is a little bit too high, so I'm just gonna increase my aperture. If the exposure is too high, you wanna incre increase your aperture, not anything else, so just, just increase your aperture. And again, if the exposure is too low, just decrease your aperture, but always be aware of the natural light. Pippi? Good, wait. Oh wow, good girl. Are you ready? Okay, good girl. Okay, good girl, that'll do, that'll do. When you've finished in terms of packing down, if you grab a pair of super sharp scissors for your seamless, and you wanna go to the last mark on it, so for me the last mark is this one here, and then you just want to cut through. So you can do this in between in your session, you can do this between sessions, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that if you are including the bottom of your seamless, especially if you shoot on carpet, you're gonna to have to keep pulling new bits out. So you just cut straight across. And then your bottom bit can be recycled and your top bit can be wrapped up and taped. So I mean, guys, if I was doing this with a paid client, I would make sure that I've shot on a couple of different colors so that they've got some variation there. I would make sure I've done different poses. I would make sure I do tight, middle and wide. Even though shooting on such a narrow backdrop, you're gonna definitely have to do some editing work. So even with that considered, I would definitely be doing that. I'm gonna pack the rest down and meet you back in a sec. I am melting, I'm so warm right now. I have opened the window uh, to try and get some fresh air in, so if you can hear general road noises, then that's why. We've covered quite a few bits today. I'm gonna show you the pictures that we got today after I've just run a quick edit over them. I'm not going into the end of the earth with the editing on these pictures because I think, you know, it's just an exercise to show you that it can be done. Where I've used a strobe, you can always interchange a speed light. That's absolutely fine. Um, and to be fair, I started with speed lights and I still have them. I just don't really use them anymore because my strobes can do what they can do. But um, yes, definitely, if you don't have a strobe, use a speed light. If you guys have looked into studio photography, you've probably seen videos of people who have done like a three, four, five light setup. Personally, to me, that's overkill. I just don't need it. I've never needed that level of lighting. I've done three and four light setups in the past, but because I don't shoot on a white background, I don't need to blow out the background. And if I wanted to, I could use a hair light, which I have done, um, and I, I would occasionally do it depending on the dog. If I was shooting a black dog on a black background and the dog was well-trained, I would probably use a light to the rear with a uh, snoot on or barn doors or a grid just to make sure that it doesn't spill over onto the black but other than that two lights is absolutely fine for me and as we've shown today you can do one with a reflector that's absolutely fine as well it just it takes practice and I know I go on about this all the time but really practice makes perfect I remember my first experience with studio was with a piece of black fabric a faux leather futon a labrador and one speed line I'm gonna try and include pictures from that. These pictures are from the, I would imagine the third time I'd ever used a speed light. And so that is the kind of place where I started. And then it just kind of grew over time. I did black and then I did white because I feel that's a natural progression that everybody does. If you don't know how to do white well, it is more difficult. You do need more space than we could achieve in here today. I would not suggest doing a white background in a small space, it's just, you will just have to do so much editing, there's no point. And with a black background, again, it, really, this is too small. You need to have separation from the background to be able to knock that straight out properly. Obviously, if you have got an image of a black background that you need to remove the background from, then watch the video that I posted up recently, which was a full edit, but a large chunk of that was knocking out a background. That is not the right way of doing it. You should shoot properly and shoot it right the first time. So that is just worth mentioning because I'll probably get eaten alive by the photography community by saying you can just edit your way through life, but you can't. You can't. You need the skills. What else? 
You can practice all of your lighting stuff on a stuffed animal. I would suggest everybody gets a large stuffed bear because hugs are good. And so I don't really want to go on about this any longer. We'll go into the specifics in future videos of each different thing. So studio lighting, that kind of thing, um, different background options. We'll, we will do all of those. But this I just think was really important because I think everybody should give it a go if they can and if they can get the equipment. Let's roll with my little surprise that I had. I said I'd pick up on something at the end of the video, so I think it's probably a good time to cover that. I have a very exciting announcement and that is that I have over the last few days finished the website for that dog spot. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm either fleshing out the videos with a blog post or I'm listing the videos in more easy to look at categories and that should make it easier for you to find what you need for your stage of your photography journey. That website is linked in the description below, bottom of the homepage and at the bottom of the main blog page there is a subscribe form for an email list. Now if you join that email list every month and no more than once a month I will be doing a monthly digest of what we have covered in that month and that might be useful as well if you are not wanting to get YouTube notifications and if you are not wanting to get Facebook notifications so that is potentially an option for you. Thanks so much for watching and if you like this video please do press the subscribe button. Oh I feel like a broken record but it is just so important and I will see you all again very very soon.